If you have inflammatory bowel disease, you may be recommended to have surgery, but it can be difficult to time surgery when you've been on immunosuppressant medications. Watch this video to understand a new approach to planning surgery for IBD patients on immunosuppressants. When immunosuppressant medications fail to control the symptoms of inflammatory bowel disease, you may be recommended to have surgery to resect the disease portion of bowel. Use of immunosuppressant medications near the time of surgery have raised concerns for surgical complications. It has been believed that receiving immunosuppressants too near the time of surgery would delay wound healing, which means that the incision sites may not heal well, but it could also mean that the area where the bowel is reconnected, which is called the anastomosis, may also not heal well, it may even leak. Further, there's concern that patients on immunosuppressants are much more likely to develop infections, which is a particular concern after surgery. Historically, surgeons have avoided doing surgery too near the time of having received an immunosuppressant, and they may delay surgery just to allow more time since the last dose of immunosuppressant. They've also been concerned that reconnecting the bowel at the time of the initial surgery could lead to a leak, and that's meant that patients have an ostomy. For many patients, receiving an ostomy is one of the largest barriers to proceeding with a surgical treatment of their inflammatory bowel disease. Patients feel concerned about emptying their stools into a bag and having to manage that bag on a daily basis. And while many patients are hesitant to have an ostomy bag, my experience is that once they have it, most of them manage it very comfortably. But all the same, wouldn't it be great if they didn't have to go through several months of wearing an ostomy bag before they could finally be reconnected? Contrary to that prevailing view, some experts believe that using immunosuppressants close to the time of surgery may actually help patients do better. And this is for a couple of reasons. First, by calming inflammation, patients tend to have a more robust appetite. Their body is also better prepared to use the nutrition that the patient is consuming. Further, by calming inflammation, we make for a quieter surgical field. I myself know that when I do a colonoscopy on a patient that has very aggressive inflammatory bowel disease, that is a much harder colonoscopy to complete than someone who has very calm and quiet, well-controlled inflammatory bowel disease. And so it stands to reason that controlled inflammation is a better environment to perform surgery. When there are these types of competing views in science, we need to evaluate the question formally through a study, and that exactly happened. Data from this trial showed that there wasn't a higher incidence of surgical leak or infection when patients had had an immunosuppressant medication received shortly before the time of surgery. And because there was no difference, this suggests that patients don't have to wait to be reconnected, and they may also not need to necessarily wait so long to actually have the surgery performed. And this is great news for patients with inflammatory bowel disease because it has the potential to remove one of the very large barriers for patients to proceed with surgery, which is the placement of the ostomy bag. As a side note, this study did show that patients had a higher risk of forming clots. And that's a problem that we know is very real with inflammatory bowel disease, but is worth emphasizing because patients with inflammatory bowel disease are very often having gastrointestinal bleeding when they're hospitalized. And yet all the same, they need to foremost have anticoagulants to prevent blood clots. This study is applicable to so many patients with inflammatory bowel disease because almost as a rule, if you're having surgery, it's because you failed immunosuppressants. So this applies to a lot of patients. And it's also so important for them to hear that there may be an opportunity for them to forego having an ostomy bag. Often real world experience proves different than studies. And so this data may not apply to an individual patient. And this is a decision that's made between the GI doctor, the surgeon, and the patient, but I think it could influence practice. If you have inflammatory bowel disease, I hope you found this video informative and subscribe to the channel to continue learning with us. Thank you and be safe.